This is Track Talk, and we'll be going through a game of 18 Chesapeake again. Um, I said in the past that I probably won't do too many of these games, and I think I'll be sticking to that. Um, but we only got one video of this game on the channel, so why don't we do another one? I picked this game in particular because it has some names that I re uh, recognize, Dagrim and German Steel, um, also Quarosia. Um, and I know that these are not totally new players, so hopefully we'll see some um, higher level skill um, in this game. The CV is coming with a share of the LV. The LV is, of course, starting in the upper right of the map. It's usually a pretty good starting company, so the CV um, has, you know, a little bit more value than if we were to start with the SRR or the NNW, for instance. Dogrim's going to start us off, and he is bidding on the CNO. Um, this is a uh, blocker uh, private, so has some good value for the buy-in, but not the most interesting uh, private ability. Krausia, he is bidding on the Columbia and Philadelphia. This is, I think, one of the better track laying uh, privates. It does synergize pretty nicely with both the PRR and the Lehigh Valley. So not the highest value in terms of buy-in, but I do like the ability. German Steel bidding on the B&O. B&O is probably the best private in the game. Um, so I think if you can get this for cheap, you are well on your way to winning. Funny Bay, the only player I'm not familiar with, he's going to build, bid on the Baltimore and Susquehanna. Um, this is, I think, uh, just a worse version of the Columbia and Philadelphia. You buy it in for a little bit more, but it's really just not a very exciting private. Not my first choice of bid. Dogrim here, um, maybe looking to just pull. He would end up with $15 of revenue, two privates, and that would leave probably Fundy Bay to buy the CV. The CV in this game is not like the B&O in 1830. I don't think it's as bad of a private. Um, and especially when it gives you a share in a co good company like the LV, it's not the end of the world to end with it, but um, still not ideal. So we'll see what he wants to do. He does pull. Um, that gives German Steel the B&O for 100, and I think that's the biggest problem with doing what he's done. Um, the B&O is a very good private, and um, I worry about giving it away for so cheap. The priority is probably going to end up with Dagram though, because I think Fundy Bay is on the hook for the CV. So the B&O doesn't actually give you the presidency of the B&O company, it just gives you a share. So maybe Dagram is going to look to steal the B&O away from German Steel if he's able to maintain priority. We'll see what happens here. And actually, Querosia is going to take the CV. So I've, I've talked on this on the channel before, but I think there's two schools of thought on this. So in this situation, Querosia and Funny Bay both have $10 of income, and um, one of those players should probably be taking the Cornelius Vanderbilt. You know, it's funny, now that I mentioned it, I was forgetting that the B&O has no private income, so really German Steel would be on the hook for the CV if Querosia didn't buy it. But let's set that aside for a second. Querosia um, is operating before Fundy Bay, and uh, in my mind has the ability to pass on the CV um, is not under the obligation to buy it. Because if he passes, then Fundy Bay would have to pass, and that would give, er, so Fundy Bay would have the option of bidding on it, and that would give all the other players the option of getting private income if Fundy Bay didn't buy it. Um, so I think in my way of thinking, Fundy Bay is the one that's obligated to buy it by operating later in priority. That all goes out the window, of course, because German Steel has absolutely no private income. So, um, in theory, he would really be the one to buy this. But looks like, regardless, Corosia is um, happy to take the Cornelius Vanderbilt, and he will be um, getting the LV presidency. Again, he has the Columbia um, private, which is quite helpful for the LV in terms of track development. So not I don't think it's the end of the world for him to get this. Um, and looks like he pars it at 95, so max value. Does he have the money to float it? He should. He needs um, six shares to float, so he may actually be just a few bucks short. Um, he needs four more shares, and I don't think that he has um, the cash. He shouldn't, um, so he's looking for some help to float this. I don't know if the other players are going to be willing to give it. They can all float their own companies. And German Steel does steal the presidency. Oh, I'm sorry. He is able to just get the presidency of the B&O, so really good for him um, as a result of Querosia, um 
losing priority by buying the LV. So I have to imagine that Dagram is kind of kicking himself that things played out the way it did. I'm sure that he was doing the math and expecting German Steel to get both the LV and the B&O, which is definitely not a good position. But instead, Querosia has um, given German Steel a cheap B&O and priority into the stock round, so he's able to get the presidency. So he's actually able to par the B&O for max value in the first stock round, which is, in my opinion, kind of a disaster for the table. Um, Funny Bay. He is going to be taking the PRR. I think the PRR is an okay company. Um, doesn't have the best early game runs, but it's a pretty strong company in the mid and late game, so not unreasonable to take it. The Baltimore and Susquehanna um, doesn't synergize too well, I don't think, with the PRR. You're never going to be able to lay a straight city right into the BS, so you're going to have to wait at least um, two operating rounds to really take advantage of that. And by then, you may be losing out on track in the... Um, the Washington tile and the Baltimore tile. So I don't know if he has much synergy there, but it's definitely not a bad company to be starting. Dagram now, the person that pulled, does have plenty of cash to float. Um, if I'm this player, I'm probably looking towards the LV or the CNA, perhaps the CNL. He's not going to be able to steal the presidency from Querosia, so not really worthwhile investing there. Probably looking at the CNA or the CNO would be my guess. He instead is going to take the NNW. Um, that is very unexpected from my perspective. Um, the NNW is a very slow to start company, and I think its primary role in the game is to tempt players to try and suitcase it. I don't think that this is a good company for a first start, um, and it really doesn't synergize very well with his privates. So maybe he's hoping to operate last by parring so low and be able to buy in his privates before everyone else, just deplete this company of all of its cash and leave it to suitcase until the end of the game, where he may be able to run it as a yellow company. The problem with the yellow strategy in Chesapeake is that the yellow area of the stock market is exceedingly small, which makes it very hard to pull off. So I, I mean, if I'm in this situation, that's probably what I'm trying to do, but, uh, I'm a little bit surprised that he's going for that. It seems risky. Imagine we'll be seeing Querosia just uh, continuing to float the LV. And he buys an NNW, actually. So maybe hoping to sit on the private revenue of the Cornelius Vanderbilt. But this does leave him, I think, open to losing the presidency, potentially, if he's not careful. Um, I, I had forgotten that. We had already established he didn't have money to float the um, LV on his own. So um, that's why he's spreading his cash around. But still, um, the LV is not a bad presidency to have. He needs to be a little bit careful that he doesn't distribute his cash too far and lose the presidency. German Steel continuing to float the B&O. He's my favorite player to take this game as uh, at this very early stage. Of course, it's early, so all bets are off. PRR continuing to float. NNW also floating. Has been getting help from Querosia this whole time. Um, so interesting that we're seeing him choose this company of all the options to invest in. It is the cheapest, so he's going to be able to buy up five shares um, in theory. But given what we've just said about Dagram potentially being able to buy his privates in early and then dump the company, I think it's risky. I'm sure Dagram would have no objection to buying his privates, laying crappy track, and then um, taking over the LV by dumping the NNW. Fundy buying the PRR, and NW looks like it's on the track to selling out. And who's left with priority there? German Steel. So the NW did sell out. It's a split presidency, floating up, but still operating last. Um, very curious to see how this plays out. Um, Querosia has put himself in a dangerous position, in my opinion. He does not have priority on Dagram, and Dagram is pretty easily able to buy a ton of cheap trains and um, in his privates, depending on how these other players want to play. There's an extra two train in Edison Chesapeake um, compared to the 1830 base game, so it makes it a little bit harder for him to buy directly into the threes, but if these players um, are you know, aggressive in buying twos, if each of them buy two twos, um, which is not unheard of, really, then the um, Querosia play is in a very dangerous spot. He is laying towards DC, very standard, and he buys just a single two trains, so probably Querosia will be safe for at least this operating round. 
PRR, also laying standard track, probably will get into Hagerstown and then look to um, head down to Baltimore or DC would be my guess. He buys two two trains. Um, unfortunately, as a result of that extra two train, we're not going to be seeing the NNW buying into the threes this turn, but that option does um, remain. And he buys two two trains. Did he lay track? He did. So not going to be a suitcase, um, but again, with a 50% split of the presidency, not super motivated, I'm sure, to um, do that anyways. None of the players have enough cash for shares, um, so we'll see if the status quo persists, in which case I'm a little bit afraid for Quercia. He sells down, um, so it didn't cost him any money to do that because it floated up. And it does hurt Dagram's net worth, but Dagram is now in the yellow and um, can buy an extra share, whereas Quercia is going to be, I assume, floating the LV and um, not having any company income for this turn. So I don't know that that's the best play. Um, doesn't hurt Dagram that much and um, helps some of the other players with cheap shares. He is going to be buying a PRR. That's interesting. So it looks like he's, you know, not only not made any money um, from the company, but now he's hurting his net worth and making it harder for him to float the LV by buying um, shares at a $5 deficit. German Steel, are we going to see Fundy and Dagram pick up these cheap NW shares? Looks like Fundy is passing. I think it would be safe to buy a share there. You have to imagine that Quercia is going to be giving you priority again. Dagram does snag his share. So now he's got 100% of the company paying to himself or to the company itself. So he's going to be just paying out and happy to do so. Quercia now, it looks... No, he, he did lose priority. Um, so... Very strange play. He has just bought one share in each of the companies, just randomly decided to pick on the NW and tank it. Um, but that puts a ton of shares in the market for Dagram. So it does li limit his liquidity in the sense that he can't easily sell out of the NW, but he's probably happy to have those market shares, would be my guess. Um, and Quarosia didn't even, um, he still lost priority. So strange. Bino going to be laying DC. And he lays it um, in a way that's kind of friendly towards the PRR and PLE, less accessible for uh, the NNW and CNO, at least until green. He runs his one train. Does he buy into the threes here? No. Um, PRR, like in Hagerstown. And does he buy a second two train or a third two train? No. So we will have the status quo. It looks like none of these companies are eager to get into the threes per se. NNW could do it now that there's been a train export. I forgot about that mechanic. Um, so we'll see if he wants to try and just um, buy his privates and then get a new company. Could try and contest the LV or at least trash its value in return for the actions of Quercia. If he buys in his privates, um, he's going to have 160, 200 bucks, so 251, and then he sells a share. Um, not going to be enough to float. It doesn't look like even by selling a B&O but he could buy a ton of shares at least with the private buy-in. I think I would be eager to buy in my privates here. Going to lay a second uh, city, runs his two trains, pays it out, and does not buy into the threes. So a little bit of a slow start in this game. Let's just look at who this is benefiting in terms of net worth. Um, Dagrim, the NNW player, as a result of his share lead and his private revenue is leading, and Quarosia is just barely in third place. Fundy, Fundy is also trailing. Um, so yeah, Quercia's decision-making here is a little suspect. German Steel has barely enough cash and can buy one NNW share, which he does. Fundy Bay um, can buy shares in the B&O or just snap up some cheap NNW shares, and looks like he will buy B&O. A little bit surprised that he doesn't take at least one share in the NNW. It's paying for more. Um, and it would be safe to do so. Dagram not going to be able to buy any more of his cheap shares. What does he look for? Maybe a B&O? He's going to pass. That's surprising. I don't think that he's going to be left with priority. I imagine that Quercia is going to be doing something here. And he buys the last B&O share. Is he going to sell down and tank it? So now Dagram does buy a share, and Quercia is tanking the B&O. 
that makes the shares um, a little bit cheaper for the rest of the players, but unfortunately they've all used all their cash already, so they're not going to be able to take advantage of it. Do we finally see this player float the LV? He is buying back N and W shares, and he will continue to just give away priority. Um, so interesting. I mean, he has hurt the N and W, and he buys one share back at a discount now. He's got uh, two paying shares in the most private income. I imagine we'll still be seeing him fall behind in terms of net worth. I think this is too passive pay. Or, not passive, that's the right term, but he's not really. Um, I guess advancing his own interest very much. Um, he's just looking to hurt other players. Bino, looking to expand from Washington D.C. Does have a mountain tile there, but he parred this very high, so not too worried about the eighty dollars track cost. And probably will look to get into the off board in Ohio um, if the other players aren't careful. Could snap up the PLE presidency and run those two companies very synergistically. He is paying out, and another two train has exported. So now I think these players have to be looking at these three trains um, and hoping to open up a green. He does buy a three. That's helpful for the other players who have access to green track now, particularly uh, the PRR, I think, is excited to have some green track. PRR could buy in his private here and then look to lay track for the Hagerstown. We'll see what he wants to do here. He's probably really regretting not having the C, uh, Columbia and Philadelphia private, and that is left with Carcia. So I'm going to lay a straight track in Columbia. I don't see that too often. It's not going to synergize very well with the BNS, so he may not uh, take advantage of that private auction, uh, private ability. The BNS has to be laid in a continuous fashion, so he can't just lay a straight here with the BNS. He does buy in his private and doesn't look like he's taking advantage of the ability, but we'll be able to run two trains at least. So he's probably looking to rush down to Washington, D.C. He also buys the three. I think that's a good move. The three trains, while they, there is an export, um, you definitely don't want to be caught with just two two trains when the four comes out. So you need to buy at least one three, I think. He buys two. That might be a little bit too much. He's going to leave this company very cash poor, and he's going to have a hard time floating. Um, could sell down, but... Um, I don't know, with two three trains, it might be a little dangerous, a little risky to sell out of the PRR so extensively. And in W, um, is he going to upgrade Charlottesville or Lynchburg? He might upgrade Lynchburg, or he could learn, led, uh, lay the dip track to get into D.C. Looks like he'll upgrade Lynchburg, just run for a little bit more. Again, he controls the revenue of 80% of this company, so just going to try and run as hot as he can early. And he does pay it out, no longer in the yellow share, probably going to buy a three and then buy in his privates. So well played to him. Um, and he may now look to sell down a few shares and then just withhold back into the yellow to keep the NNW healthy and run um, his next company um, for a lot of money. So three train exports, and we are one train away from the two trains rusting. I imagine we're going to see at least one company floating with a Dagram here, and then Quercia is still sitting on the LV presidency. So I may see two companies floating. German Steel passing. Fundy is buying an NNW. I think of all the shares to buy, that would be not my first choice because I assume we're going to be seeing Dagram selling down at least one share here. But let's see. He sells down quite heavily, so again, Fundy buys that share for 60 now it's only worth 50 Didn't have to do that, could have just waited to see what Dagram was going to do. And then Dagram has the option now of pressuring the LV presidency and then starting a company afterwards. He's not going to be able to steal the presidency if Quercia doesn't let him, um, or he just straight up par another company. Um, PLE is good. CNA is okay. I do worry a little bit about the CNA with the PL, uh, PRR heading right down to DC in Baltimore. Um, CNA could get tokened out. Um, so I, I think if I'm playing this game, I pressure the LV, lock up Quercia's liquidity. He's been using that um, liquidity as a cudgel um, throughout this whole game. Plus, it'd just be gratifying to get him back for trashing your NNW. And then once you've trashed the LV, probably two or three slots. Um, you then can start your own company. The only danger there is that you will then have to buy the three and the four, whereas if the LV operates before you and your new company, um, they would probably be the one to buy that last three. 
So he does take the CNA, he pars it for max, um, still has the option of trashing shares a little bit, and we'll see how that uh, works out for him. Querosia, looks like he's buying cheap shares, or not cheap shares, but he's buying market shares. Not eager to float this LV, just content to sit on the president, uh, not the president, the private income, which to be fair is not insignificant, um, but we'll see how long he's allowed to do that. The danger of sitting on the CV's income for so long is that um, the LV may lose opportunities in track development and token placement and may become a much less appealing company the longer you allow the other companies to operate. Fundy, he is buying another cheap N&W, leaving himself open for a dump, but may want to just take this presidency. Again, uh, the N&W, it's not a huge investment for him. Still has some company cash, has private income, has not lost any of its um, tokens, really. Um, so it would not be unreasonable to see him take this presidency. We'd just see him withhold, but he would only have three shares, so not the end of the world, and he can continue to pay out on the PRR. One um, word of caution about that, though, is that the PRR also doesn't have much company cash, so he may be putting himself in a tight spot, but we'll see. Dagram continuing to float the CNA. Germ, uh, Querosia is also going to buy CNA, so is he going to just tank this company again? Um, I'm sure that Dagram would be happy to just invest five shares instead of the normal six. Fundy sells down out of the PRR and takes the presidency of the NNW. Huh. I'm a little bit surprised he sold out of the PRR. Dagram is returning the favor for Querosia. Um, maybe saying that, hey, if you want to buy another share in the CNA, well, I'll just trade you and take the LV. And Quercia buys a CNA, so he needs to, and he didn't sell. I don't remember if Chesapeake is sell buy or if he could have sold this, but he needs to be a little bit cautious that he doesn't um, trade away the CNA for the LV. I guess, you know, which of these companies would I rather have? I think probably... It's better for Dagram to keep the CNA. He can get into Baltimore a little bit easier, and he doesn't control the uh, Columbia Philadelphia tiles like Querosia does. So probably Querosia would be happy to trade companies um, and just lay tragic track for the LV. I think Dagram needs to be a little bit reluctant to trade here. Fundy, he is buying an LV as well. So it looks like all these players are going to kind of conspire to float the LV on Querosia. And Dagram is also buying a LV, so maybe just looking to trade um, companies. Can he f can he float both of them? Um, I don't. Well, I guess it depends. If Querosia sells out of the LV, um, then Dagram will be free to sell other shares to defend the presidency of the CNA. If he were to end up with both presidencies, that would be extremely strong. Um, I don't, I mean, there sh that shouldn't be allowed to happen, but it is possible with bad play, I think. Querosia, he buys an LV, so he's going to defend his presidency. Um, Dagram is still free to pressure, though. And Fundy Baby buys another NNW, so he's going um, whole hog into the NNW. He's going to have to withhold on at least one of these companies a couple of times to survive the uh, permanent trains breaking. Dagram. Sells down out of the LV. It looks like he will just be floating the CNA after all. Only going to have to buy four shares of it. But unfortunately, this does put him in a situation where he's operating before the LV and going to have to buy that three train probably. So he has floated the CNA and still has cash to spread around into paying shares. May look towards the B&O, for instance. Krause is passing. Maybe the first time uh, in the game that he doesn't go last in priority. And German Steel also passing, Funny Baby passing, and Dagram passing. So he is sitting on $200 of cash and is going last in priority. That's a little bit questionable in my opinion. A little bit surprised that he didn't um, buy some more shares somewhere. I guess probably worried about a dump, but if you're worried about that, at least invest in your CNA more. It's going to run at least once, better than just having 200 cash in the bank. CNA um, has some options here, so can lay a vertical straight city into Philadelphia, can lay a, um, a oblique straight city into Wilmington and this uh, gray tile and leave its options into getting into Baltimore as well as New York open. Um, I think the only wrong option here is probably to lay 
in this direction directly towards New York. It does get you there potentially, actually it doesn't probably even save you any time, and then it's going to make it harder to get into Baltimore. Um, I, I, I don't know, I guess you could make an argument for that. I'm not entirely sure how the double O cities in Baltimore look. Let's look at that for a second. So there's two gentle curves and then crossing gentle curves as well as two tights. So the tight, if it's laid this way, I think the other one has to go this way. So that's not what he's hoping for. Two gentle curves would allow the Baltimore player to get east and block the CNA unless he goes into Wilmington. And then the crossing gentle curves, I think that um, also would require a Wilmington access. So yeah, I think heading um, northeast to southwest is a mistake for the CNA player, um, but we'll see what he decides. He's going to go lay straight down. Um, that's fine. He can look to upgrade the Philadelphia track before the LV operates and um, prevent him from getting into New York potentially through there. And he buys probably the three and the four, I would have to guess, since he's not invested in any of these two trains at this point. Instead, just buying the first three. Um, this gives the B&O player the option to run his two. Um, it's not going to be that much extra money, uh, and he will have to lay Leesburg to do it. And we'll see if that's um, an option that he takes. He does, so good runner of both his trains, courtesy of the CNA. He pays it out, and he does not buy the four either. So the LV will be forced to buy the four, it looks like. Uh, I guess, of course, if he didn't lay track and he just wants to sit on the private income, that is valid, but probably a bad idea. He does lay track, so he will be buying the four. Could also buy in his private here and look to link up with the Pittsburgh, um, or sorry, the PRR, or he could, um, I guess, head to Strasbourg, but we'll see. He closes his private, does buy a four, and doesn't buy in his privates. PRR. He's upgrading his home track, going to be running a little bit better, but he does lose some tempo in terms of getting into Baltimore or um, Washington. I don't think there's as much competition for Washington, but it would be really sweet for him if he was able to snag that Baltimore uh, token. But it doesn't look like it's going to come to pass. And in W, um, operating by the same president, I think he's probably looking to withhold with one of these companies. Would have liked to have seen him not invest so heavily in the NNW, um, if that's the strategy, though. Upgrade Charlottesville, running um, into three green, green cities and not rushing towards Washington, D.C. He runs for 110, and he pays that out. Uh, I, I wonder if we're going to be seeing him run into problems in the near future. b and he is upgrading D.C., and going to be running a little bit better as a result. He has got $90. Probably we'll see him starting to head over to Ohio um, in future stock round, operating rounds. He buys in his private, so he's going to have a bunch of cash in the next stock round. CNA, does he upgrade Philadelphia or does he upgrade Camden? He upgrades Philadelphia, and that is not a great upgrade for either of these companies. I, well, I take that back. It's okay for the CNA. He can head to Baltimore through Wilmington with this upgrade. Is there a straight dit available for him? There's one left. Um, and he needs to be a little bit careful that that straight dit isn't laid by the NNW, who does have the option of taking it. And that will um, really put a wrench in his plans. So he is going to just run his three train. He pays out 60, not the most exciting revenue. And he passes by trains. PRR running two three trains. Does he head towards Baltimore now? He does. So, you know, watching this happen, I think that this greatly increases the risk that uh, the NNW lays a straight dit here and then is able to steal the Baltimore token from the CNA. That is one of the benefits of having two presidencies. You have a lot more map presence. He is now withholding on the PRR. I do think he has to withhold at least, you know, on one of these companies, so I'm glad to see him doing that. I think it would have made a little bit more sense to withhold on the NNW and keep it yellow, but maybe he'll withhold twice. Operation of the LV, probably upgrading Allentown. Instead, laying into New York. Does get some decent revenue, but New York is only 60 in green, so not amazing. He'll be running for 120, and now the option in the NW. So we'll see if he's going to play hardball um, with the CNA here. He does. 
Um, so I'm impressed at my ability to see that happening. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, that is really bad news for the CNA player. And he's going to... He places a second token. I'm a little surprised to see that. One, he needs the cash. And two, that token really doesn't do anything for him. He's only running one train. Um, so is he going to withhold here? He pays out. Uh, a little bit confused by that decision. I would have liked him to have held on to that cash. A, uh, another four train has exported. We have three left. And we will see at least one company floating, perhaps two. Um, German Steel is going to be looking to float a company, probably the PLE. Um, and then perhaps Dagrim also tries to float a second company here. Querosia, he has priority, buys a CNA. Probably going to be trashing this company, would be my guess. German Steel selling his B&O. That's a little bit surprising. Could have sold some N&W shares, too. Um, he does do that now. So he's going to be parring quite high. Doesn't need that much cash to par for 95, so not sure why we are seeing him sell so heavily. He takes the CNO instead of the PLE. Um, CNO has more tokens, does synergize nicely with the BNO. Uh, will be competing a little bit for track with the NNW, but should be able to still get a run into new, uh, Washington, D.C. in the near future. Um, so not unreasonable. I think that the PLE is a pretty good starting company. You can lay um, track into Greenspring and then run three two trains. But maybe in the later game, the CNO is a better company as a result of its increased number of tokens. So I'm not going to criticize that decision. Um, just uh, personal preference, probably. Funny Bay doesn't have a whole lot of cash, is in a dangerous situation here. Would love to see him invest in other players' companies rather than buy his cheap shares. He really needs to hope that those market shares stay for him, I think. And he's going to buy an LV. That's fine. It's running for a good amount, and he also takes a share off the market to hurt that presidency. Dagram, he is buying a share of his own CNA. Uh, questionable. And German Steel buying a CNO. He's just going to continue to float. So expecting Fundy Boy, Fundy, Fundy Bay to leave with priority probably, and he buys another LV. So pressuring the presidency a little bit would be pretty funny to see him steal this presidency. I don't think he's going to pull it off, but um, is going to force Querosia to probably sell a share. Dagram buying a CNO, helping the float, maybe looking to trash the shares a little bit. Querosia is going to sell an NNW, so Funny Bay is happy about that, has now 80% of the company uh, revenue, and he buys his own LV. German Steel continuing to float the CNO. Thanking Dagram for the help, I'm sure. Funny Bay, is he just passing here? He is. And he's expecting to have priority, so that investment in the LV is probably pretty safe for him. Dagram buying a CNA, so he's fully invested. Again, CNA's shares are expensive, and it doesn't have that great of revenue. It's probably going to be losing out on Baltimore to the PRR. Um, so not sure why he's investing so heavily in it. It only has one train, too. Croatia probably passing, and German Steel is now floated in the CNO, leaving him plenty of cash to invest in other companies. A little bit surprised again that he sold so heavily out of the BNO. If he is looking to invest in other companies, maybe looking towards the LV. Croatia sells out of the CNA, and what is he going to put his cash? He is taking CNO shares, so maybe just trashing stock again. Um, he's been very eager to do this in prior stock rounds, but this will be giving German Steel priority if he's not careful. German Steel buying a CNO, and Krosi is investing more heavily in the CNO, so I imagine we'll be seeing him trash uh, shares. He has now three shares. It's floating up technically, but I don't think he's going to hold this. He does sell it down. Um, is there any significance to operating order that he's doing here? He does leave the LV operating ahead of these other tr companies. Um, yeah, not entirely sure. I think he's just someone that likes to trash shares. Querosia, he is now part in the PLE, so he's not going to be able to float that. Um, and does leave this open to other people stealing the presidency, but as a result of putting a bunch of shares in the market, they're not going to have the liquidity to do that, probably. So I guess he's just reserving the presidency. Everybody else is passing. He is buying a share of his LV. That will be running pretty well. And he will give um, German Steel priority once again. 
German Steel operating the now sold down B&O. Does he upgrade Baltimore here? He actually is just going to continue heading towards Ohio, so he's not going to get involved in the fight between the PRR and CA, which will allow the PRR to take that token. Running a three train for 90 still, does have a bunch of market shares and um, is going to be getting some cash back into the company as a result. LV, um, does he now upgrade Allentown? He does, so not able to run into Philadelphia and New York, um, but he will have the option of blocking the CNA potentially from um, New York, at least temporarily, if he lays a straight, uh, a sharp turn here. That is usually unsuccessful because there is a tile with a straight or a sharp turn and a gentle turn that can be laid. If there's only one of them, though, LV could look to deny the CNA player that tile. And it looks like there is only one. So if he really wants to play hardball, he could look to lay that tile here and um, block the CNA out of New York for a long time. Um, and that will also give him two runs into New York. He's only running one train, so not going to be able to do that real real quick, but um, that may be his thinking. Running for 130 now, and he pays that out, not buying a second train. So I imagine he's not going to be rushing towards that New York track. But honestly, running two four trains um, into New York twice and hitting Philadelphia, that would be a very high revenue um, probably worth investing in the four to do that, even though you leave yourself um, a little bit vulnerable for the permanence. Um, you've already reserved your presidency in the PLE, which could potentially rescue you. So I think that I would be playing kind of greedy here and taking that strategy. PRR probably going to Baltimore. He does. Um, and as a result, will um, have access to Philadelphia probably. Um, he should token this and does. Okay and his runs are going to be quite a bit better now. He's actually withholding. So again, he's choosing to withhold on the PRR rather than the NNW, which is surprising to me. He buys the four train, going to be running three trains. Um, he's not going to have very good runs for these three trains, so a little bit surprised by that. I think it would have been great for the LV to buy the four, and I don't think it's great for the PRR to buy the four. So I'm very worried about this player. Um, he has two companies with very little cash, and we are looking at the permanent trains coming out very soon. So we may look at a bankruptcy here, um, which would be quite unusual for 18 Chesapeake. CNA has been has lost out on the track in Baltimore, probably looks to head towards New York now, um, and does do the upgrade for that. Could lose out to the LV, um, but actually I don't think there's enough track actions for the LV to take that um, blocking power that I was describing. Even if he can't block the CNA though, securing a second run into New York for the LV is very, po very powerful. He's going to run for 70. And pays that out. CNO first operation has been trashed and probably looking to head up towards uh, Washington, D.C. He buys a four, and for some reason, I thought that PRR had bought the other four. So there must have been three fours in the market. Um, I thought that there were only two. So that does lend, um, lend the PRR at NW player, a little bit of extra time. I thought we were going to be seeing the fives come out, but um, I missed that there was an extra four in the market. NW probably linking up with DC and um, will improve his run a little bit if he does, but he has to lay a token to take advantage of it. He does, and he's paying out for 110. Um, hmm. So I actually. I'm surprised, but that run is actually better than running through DC. So he did it the right way. But again, this player has, what, $200 of company cash and um, not even $200. So dangerous position. Does he buy a train over out of the PRR and try and run three trains with the NNW? He does not. B&O operating again, does get into Ohio, and that is a 60 value city. So running into that is gonna be better than hitting Baltimore. Looks like he understands that and pays out. LV, does he link up with New York here? He is buying in his private. 
I'm actually surprised that he still had his private. I missed that and should be able to link up with Harrisburg. Um, does he also link up with New York? So that's helpful for the PRR. This company has three trains um, and now has the track to run all three of them pretty well. Can also token into Allentown and secure its runs into New York. He does link up with New York. So the PRR player with a token in Allentown can hit New York twice um, with basically no track investment on his own part. That is um, very good <laughs> for the PRR player. Um, makes it much less likely that he will bankrupt now with some clever withholds. LV runs a single train and again does not buy a four. So we are sitting on a final four train that will export at the end of this round. CNA kind of miserable, I think, with how things have worked out and does lay track to head into New York. But um, I think the PRR player could spell its fate if it were to take the gentle curve upgrade and perhaps laid here, for instance. He's running for 80 and he withholds. A little bit surprised that he's withholding. Doesn't give him enough cash. Oh, it does give him enough cash. So he's going to buy into the fives here. Um, which is bad news for the PRR. He's not actually be able to run those three trains. So I think we will see a bankruptcy here um, because he bought a train that he's not going to be able to take advantage of now. Upgrading Baltimore, does he um, lay a token in Allentown and hit New York twice? No. Um, New York is now for 80. I'm a little bit surprised to see that. I have to imagine that run would have been better um, even with the dits than the run from Baltimore to Washington, D.C. So hope to see him do a withhold here. He's um, going to be in a world of hurt when these sixes come out. He pays out. Uh, CNO probably laying up towards uh, the gentle curve leading out of Washington, D.C. And when that city is in brown, he will be able to leave a token there. He's going to pay out 70. And in W, he upgrades D.C. and is going to run his three train. He unfortunately cannot uh, afford a five with either of his companies, so he is in a lot of danger here. We're going to see the PLE float for sure, and um, who wins if Fundy Bay goes bankrupt? Quercia is in the running, but German Steel is slightly ahead of him, so it's going to be a close game if Fundy Bay um, bankrupts. German Steel buying his B&O. Funny Bay selling LV. And is he going to look to float the SRR to try and bail himself out? The SRR is probably the worst company in the game and um, has lost out on a token on Baltimore. There is a third hole in one of the 00 cities in gray, so could look to get there. But again, Strasburg is just not a good company, so he's um, in danger here. Instead, buying a CNA share um, and... Diagram buying a CNO. CNO has two trains, going to be running very well as soon as it gets its token in, into um, Washington, D.C., Quarosia. He is buying a PLE, just working to float this company. If he is allowed to float here, um, he can buy another of the fives. But there are companies operating ahead of him, the B&O, that will snag one as well. So he should be able to secure at least one of the fives between the LV and the PLE. B&O is ledge, so he's not going to be able to um, change that operating order. Funny Bay, buying CNA still. Is he just looking at trash shares? Um, not entirely sure. This company is ledged as well. So I guess he's just buying paying shares, but I'm very nervous that he's going to um, go bankrupt. German Steel, he is passing. PLE is continuing to float. Funny Bay is buying just paying shares in all these companies. He's going to float them up. Krausia is one share away from floating. He's going to have to sell something um, to float. Could sell a B&O, but maybe not the best choice there. And Funny Bay is buying his own shares. He's buying them from the market. So again, this is a company that needs to withhold. Um, I'm not sure why he's buying his own shares. Krausia does sell a B&O. That's interesting. And floats his PLE. Funny Bay... He is now passing, sitting on $200, and he will be going, what, second priority as a result? We'll see if this six train is able to come out in this round, in which case he's in a lot of trouble. Bino, he upgrades Leesburg and is running just one train, but will be able to snag a five here. 
which he does. So it looks like LV will get the second five and then bring out the sixes with the PLA. He is withholding. A little bit surprised to see that. What happened to the fives? Uh, who has all the fives? I thought that there was one more available. So I think I had missed um, that two of the fives were bought in the last operating round. So he's actually looking at the sixes here. If he buys a six, he is not teed up to win the game when um, the NNW and PRR player bankrupts. So he needs to be a little bit cautious about pushing trains, but unfortunately doesn't have any choice. Um, he has, uh, well, I guess he could not lay track with the PLE, um, but probably doesn't want to buy a six with the LV here. Needs to give some time for the other players to catch up or else he's going to lose when someone bankrupts. He does buy the six, though. Um, and it's going to buy the second one with a PLE, it looks like. So I think that means that Fundy Bay is bankrupt because he's on the hook for two trains. Once he buys a D, um, he's going to need a second D with a PRR. So he should be bankrupting. That was totally uh, that was totally avoidable on his part. Um, just not thinking ahead. See an upgrade in token in DC and then running his two trains, German Steel. Um, he is ahead and will be winning this game, it looks like. And he was the BNO player, so like I said, getting that BNO private um, is very strong. He's going to run for 430 and pays it out. Dagrim also running two trains, but has much worse track. Should be able to get into New York here. It does, um, but his run is going to be much worse than the BNO's run. Only 190. PRR, he's in a lot of trouble here. Really needs to withhold, but it's not going to be enough to save him, I don't think. He upgrades his home tile and is running. He does hit DC, so that's smart at least. Does he withhold? He pays out, so he's going to be going bankrupt, it looks like. And a W going to be forced to buy a D here. And Ds are cheaper in this game than 1830. He does have the liquidity to do it, but he's not going to be able to get the second one, I don't think. Selling shares in the CNA, that hurts Dagrim. Um, does it hurt German Steel at all? He is only one share in the CNA. Um, and actually, the CNA's value didn't even change, so it doesn't hurt uh, German Steel. And we have a D train coming out. This is a good game for D trains. Um, the map is usually very open, so not unreasonable to you know run the D trains, but when you have to buy two of them and you haven't withheld to with. Uh, prepare for it, that is when you run into problems. B&O just running one train, but has good track for it. Could link up with Camden here. Instead, going to upgrade the B&O, or sorry, the DC tile, and he is running for 300 with just one train. LV has a six train, can hit New York, um, but not going to be able to get into DC. Upgrading Philadelphia, and tokening with its only token in Harrisburg. Reasonable token, but he unfortunately has lost the game by bankrupting Fundy. Sino has another uh, permanent train, so he's going to be probably upgrading Baltimore here. He does. And does he leave a token there? He does. So even if this game went late, I think German Steel is in an excellent position to take it. Um, so I think that the right player has won here. PLE, not very interesting, probably just linking up with Ohio, but not going to be enough to uh, come, in, come in first. CNA, he upgrades Camden, does have a better run, but again, too little, too late. Fundy, now bankrupt here, I think. And does. All right, so we'll take uh, German Steel with the victory, closely followed by Dagram and Querosia and Fundy bringing up the rear, rear pretty distantly. Um, so interesting decision-making in this game. I think that Fundy um, could have avoided bankruptcy pretty easily, but um, just didn't uh, play properly. And Querosia, um, unfortunately, has architected his demise um, by bankrupting Fundy. Uh, Querosia played very aggressively throughout the game and I think was basically a victim of his own aggression. So uh, interesting game of Chesapeake, and Track Talk will be back in the future with more commentated games.